Hey guys and gals, if there's any ladies watching, welcome to Praxity. Just watching the Australian PGA Championship yesterday. You guys overseas, if you see it on the Golf Channel, you might have saw my buddy John Sandon break his driver on the downswing. Got to hear and the shaft broke under his hand. It came through and jammed his finger. Yeah, lucky it didn't break off and injure him. He didn't suffer any injuries. But he, uh, yeah, broke the shaft right under the grip. <clears throat> Probably put him up off a little bit. He couldn't, uh, had no driver for the rest of the round. And, um, uh, he finished level for the day, but he's, he's blown out today and looks like he's going to miss the cut, unfortunately. They're playing it just up the road here. Okay, guys, a couple of things. Just structural things with, with channel lock. Okay, how do we set the legs at, at a dress? Well, what I like to do is I like to feel that my knees are like shock absorbers, and particularly my trail knee in that I'm sitting into that trail knee. Here, I'm just sort of over here on this side, sitting into it. And on the backswing, I want to load more into it. Almost like, you know, the center of rotation for me is my trail axis, not so much the back of my neck. That's a feeling. And not so much the back of my neck or the top of my spine, that's the feeling. It's, it's actually down here. So, to get into that position and what I want to do guys I want to cultivate soggy knees at address so that I can have soggy knees at impact and there's no better way to um, to program the soggy knees than to set it up at impact at, at, at address so what do they look like at address well guys I just sit down to the ball I just sit down I get in here and it's all about balance like I get down here and you couldn't push me over with a bulldozer that's what it's about. If you can get your legs balanced and your upper body balanced over your thighs and your knees uh, and you've got a bit of flex in you, it depends on how much, how you're built and where your upper and, and where your horizontal and vertical centers of gravity are and where your mass is distributed in your body as to how much bend you want in your legs and how long your legs are, the segments, all that stuff. But guys, I just try to get comfortably balanced. That, that's all I can say. I just want to get comfortably seated in here and, and try and maintain a little bit of that that flex and that 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 sogginess and those soggy knees in the back in the backswing. Uh, where do I place my feet? <laughs> where do I place the weight in my feet? Well, at, at address, guys, it's very much towards the the heel and the arch of the trail foot, and very much in the heel. On, on the lead foot. I don't have it tipped out here. It's always in the heels for me so I can get back into the heels because <clears throat> I want to stay in the heels when I hit the ball. <clears throat> I want to be here when I hit the golf ball. So if I've got my weight forward, the chances of staying in the fear, in the, in the heel at impact is, is pretty remote. Yeah, so, so to, to capsulize, to just, just sit in there guys, just get down like you're ready to, to catch a, a medicine ball that was thrown to you or a shag bag full of balls. Just get balance. Don't, don't set up don't set up like this. Don't set up tippy-toed or anything. The reason I get into my soggy knees and I'm pretty well balanced is again because of the, the trail arm formation for me. So of course I get it in here guys. This part of my body is back here over my trail side. If I have my arm out here this quadrant of the shoulder and this bit of the mass is hanging out in space. So it's pretty hard for me to sit down into my into my haunches, so to speak, if I've got that mass hanging out in space. That's the difficulty. So what I try and do is get all the mass centered over my thigh and over my and my butt sort of hanging out in, 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 in space and my knees very much like shock absorbers. That's what I try and do. So that explains what I do with the legs and the feet and the knees. Okay guys, now the other thing is, 
the video is yesterday with the title the feeling of rightness the reason I, I told you that that I get the feeling of rightness is because I get in here like this I'm in a really nice comfortable right position now I know if I've got my trail arm here I know that at impact it's not going to be there because of centrifugal, centrifugal inertia and throw out it's going to pull my arm away a little bit and so if that happens it's going to take the club out to the ball a little bit so I compensate for that at address and you'll probably notice that dramatically with my driver and that's why I can get away with having my arm in I'll just show you the way I can get away with having my my arm into my body if, if this is a six iron and I'm setting up here at a dress and I've got my trail arm in here see I've got the club inside the ball guys here it's it's it you know the, the, the most of the club is inside the ball now why is that because I know that on the downswing this arm is going to move out a little bit and it's going to take the club out to the center of the ball like that but if I have it if I'm on top of the ball here and I've got my club centered right in behind the ball in the sweet spot there at address and I get you know inertial throw out coming down that club's going to be outside the ball now, now that's impossible to hit into out if the club is outside the ball and you'll have to make a compensating balancing move if you come down and you feel the club getting outside you, you'll do all sorts of things to to stop it from being outside and it'll compromise your balance so I, ne I neglected to to mention that and you will see it graphically illustrated when you see down the line shots of me with the driver my, my driver when I've got the ball excuse me guys if I've got the ball teed up with the driver you'll always see me from down the line my clubs here because my arms here now why is it there because I know it's going to be there at impact I know I'm going to get a bit of throw out here but if I if I have my arm in here and the clubs here and coming down I get throw out the clubs outside the ball there's no way I can hit into out and I know that having the club in here like this guys and, and my arm in here that I have to fire the club into out I have to fire the club out to the ball now if I have to fire the club out to the ball I can only fire it out to the ball from inside so that's a twofold effect it, it lets me get my trail arm in position which is my feeling of rightness that I have right through every club in the bag and it's an insurance policy against hitting into out. Now I've done it my whole life just with a general golf swing. Even when I had an extended arms out here, I always had to club in here because I knew that on the downswing uh, that my arms would extend and, and the club would go out to the ball. So that's, that's if, if you're wanting to get the feeling of rightness at address and you want to have the trail arm in the same relative position which is basically here uh, at address you're going to have to have the club inside the ball it's going to have to do that because you, you won't be swinging the club like that coming in you'll be swinging it like that as you come in and not only that if you're hitting into out like that and you're throwing the club out to the ball what happens the knock-on effect is as I throw the club out my body goes this way and I get that that hang back and that balance back here because the club is firing out there and automatically my my neural balancing system says okay you've got a lot of inertia going out there and you've got mass going out in your arms and a lot of pull going out there you have to counterbalance that pull now how do I counterbalance that pull I have this mass here going this way and it's easy to have it going that way guys if the club is firing from into out here yeah so I can actually hit the ball quite effectively with the driver in here way in here because it just makes me stretch harder coming into the ball the reason and then people say well JH if you've got your arm on your on your trail side there at address why do you want to be stretching out coming into the ball well the reason I have my right arm or my trail arm on my body at address there guys is to get is to get preterm I, I mentioned that yesterday if I don't, if I have my arm out there like that, see this shoulder here? Very hard to get preterm. If I pull this in here, look, it immediately lowers the, 
right side sticks the lead side up and it's easy to get preterm. And Bill Phillips has found that out just in the last day in the video that Bill from um, MMI Golf put up yesterday. He found himself that he was he was actually going too sideways in the backswing here. And that was because that was because he didn't have enough enough pre-turn on the lead shoulder here. And you can't get in the channel early, guys, if you haven't got much pre-turn, really, because the club will want to go that way. It'll just want to go sideways. We never wanted to go sideways. We wanted to go rearwards. And rearwards is a word that's not used in a conventional golf swing. It's always uh, always backwards, forwards. And and that and the backwards and forwards um, is a sideways action. Whereas with channel lock, we are swinging rearwards. The club is going rearwards. It goes rearwards, outwards. That's backwards, forwards. Ours is rearwards, outwards. So they're the reasons that uh, I have my trail arm in that configuration. Uh, one of the guys, William Milne, uh, yesterday or today said that uh, he noticed that the pitch shots that I was hitting down range here, being in here, they were going low. And he said, oh, you know, I want to hit the ball higher than that. Well, I explained to, to William that, that yesterday when I was hitting down here, we had, you know, like 30k wind into us here. And where the camera was set up, I wanted to hit the ball low to keep it in frame. If it goes high, you just lose the flight of the ball. But if I get some time after and there's nobody down there, I'll just hit some normal flight at height um, wedges. But, but the point I wanted to make there and bringing that up is that you, you, know, <laughs> you don't lose any height by having your arm in there. I hit the ball just as high with my wedges, if not higher than I normally do uh, here. Because, because you're getting this action, guys. We're getting hang back action. And we're getting fire the club up. Fire the club up. And remember, guys, <clears throat> the firing up is not done with the hands. It's done with the club head. The hands fire down and the club head fires up. You don't want to fire up with your hands. You want to fire the hands down and the club fires up. The club fires up by way of the wrist hinge. You don't, you don't want to get your club going up with your hands. Now the other thing when we were talking the other day, and this is all just finalising my protocol guys, I'm really close. I'm 95% there. And what I was saying the other day, <clears throat> we want to get here just have a free arm swing. What really helps that free arm swing and keeping the shoulders closed here on the downswing is having as much time as you can get at the top of the swing. Like think about the ready code or the ready pause. And that's all I'm going to concentrate on now guys. It's just, just getting it back, keeping the, the body closed, firing the arms down independently. <clears throat> just basically a free arm swing down. And, uh, and make sure I've got enough time to do that. Haven't hit any shots. I'll just hit a driver because I've got it in my hands. And I'm coming to grips with the, uh, the eight finger grip, guys, the split grip. See my arm is here. For sure. Now the other thing guys too that you've got to really think about is, 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 is actually hitting in or out more than you think you can possibly do. Because that's the thing that keeps the five o'clock nose in place. That's what keeps the five o'clock nose in place. Okay, they're, they're dead cold swings and I'm a bit a bit stiff and rigid, but I mean perfectly straight. About eighty percent contact. Okay, you warmed up, James. Had two shots. That's the one. Now, yeah, guys, that's between the the two sixty-five yard sign and the tree. That's about twelve, fourteen feet. That's gone straight in there. But you've got to hit out there, guys. You've really got to, you've got to reinforce a lot of the time. 
that you're going to hit out there. Because that's what this swing is. It's an in-to-out golf swing. And you've got to really... Got the same wind as yesterday on the back. So you've got to hit it into out. Guys, that's not a ball mark on this driver. Someone said, you've got a ball mark on the toe of your driver. You hit it there. It's uh, it had a sticker on here and it's just, it's glue and it's picked up dirt. Okay, come on, into out jades, big time, and a little bit of pause. And a bit of hang back, keep the right foot down. There you go. There's the ball guys, arms in here. Ooh, that's killed. Oh, that's killed. As I say guys, the swing looks ungainly. But the ball flight is not ungainly. <laughs> not at all. Come on, Jase. Come on. Nice ready code. Just got a little bit of trail foot lift. Keep the trail foot down and get a lot of hang back, Jase. Just need more, uh, a little bit more hang back. <clears throat> now that club of mine is probably, the toe of the club is probably two inches inside the golf ball. So to get out to the centre of the ball, it's, <laughs> it's probably five or six inches that the club goes out. Just got a little bit of lift on that trail foot, which means one of two things not getting enough push back off the lead foot and not enough five o'clock nose and the shots of shots of absolutely acceptable but swing feels not quite technically correct come on James yeah one of the guys uh, said that he's, uh, he's, he's having success with getting his arm in here with the irons but when he goes to the long clubs not having success but what you've got to what you've got to think about guys as the club gets longer here as, as it gets longer it's it's definitely going to to have a lot more pull so you've got to really stay back here really concentrate on staying back and you really need to try and uh, to have uh, the club inside the ball. And I think this is for Hong. Hong, if, if 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 with the driver, if you're back here and you and you're close to the ball here, buddy, uh, you'll be too close to it. So you need to get get back here a little bit, so you've got a little a chance for your arms to stretch going out to the ball, and you've got to stay back here and let the let the club stretch away from you. Okay, come on, James. Everything right. Proper protocol. just got a little tra trail foot lift and and I put that down just put it down to uh, not enough trail foot down at impact oh well, more to the point I, I think it's 
it's not, not actually that. What I think it is is not enough soggy knees. And it's easy to isolate. Can only be a couple of those things. So I'll go to extreme soggy knees. And I, I bet that fixes it. Come on, Joe, sit into the shot. Now, guys, that's in the mayor's office, that. That's a lot of so Yeah, the soggy knees pushes you back into the trail foot. And, guys, there's a... There's an overwhelming physical um, need and influence to stand up in the downswing. Uh, but you've got to resist that and you've got to keep your knees bent. Whatever you've got at address, you've got to try and keep that at impact. You've just got to do that. Come on, really soggy knees, Jay. That's perfect, that's in the mayor's office. This is dead straight. Yeah, so guys, that was that was good to isolate in your protocol. What was not what wasn't I doing? Not enough soggy knees. And how do I get more soggy knees? I really concentrate on more soggy knees. I really do. Okay, last shot. Come on, Jase. All protocols in count them all down, Jase. good shot okay guys so they're just some points today that we need to uh, to look at go over and reinforce a little bit there's no one down there I'll just hit a couple of shots down range and just show you the height you can actually get on those pitch shots for anybody that was concerned with the picture there's no wind here now it's just dropped completely it's gone away so I'll just I won't be trying to hit the ball low